person on migration and political differences. Sir, a very good afternoon to you on Heritage Day. Happy Heritage Day to and you to first. And you too. All right, Lauren, the biggest migration crisis in history. What do you make of this and why wasn't this dealt with before it was a crisis? Well, I think what we're seeing is, is a huge number of people now trying to get into Europe. Of course, this is a migration crisis that has started somewhere else. And if you look at, at the number of people in, in countries like Lebanon, one out of six people now in those countries mm -hmm. is a refugee, mainly from Syria, but also from other regions. Countries don't like to deal with this. It's difficult. You don't win any political points by helping a refugee. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think it's now only that the, the people have started arriving in Europe and, and arriving in, in numbers. Uh, that, that there's a crisis and people are having to deal with it. Look, Lauren, many people ask the question, are these migrants or refugees? What is the difference between the two? And how does it change your political asylum seeking mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, or rather you seeking asylum in a country? How does that change your status when you go into a country, either as a refugee or as a migrant? Yeah, I mean, what, what we see is that there are international and domestic laws and Europe has its own laws mm -hmm. around what a, what a refugee is. Basically, it has to be recognized by the host state, by the state coming in, that you've been fleeing persecution or some kind of natural disaster. Mm -hmm. Someone who's a migrant is someone who's ostensibly just looking for a, a better life. But as we've seen with Zimbabwe, as we've seen in other places where there's ongoing political issues, it may not be that their life is immediately at stake, yes. but that there's no chance for them, there'll be no chance for their future. And this is where some of those lines get blurred. Mm. All right. Now, some member states have been locked in summits and, and meetings to try and find ways to deal with this uh, crisis. But why no permanent solutions yet, Lauren? Are we just seeing more measures to actually prevent the migrants from going to seek asylum to those countries? Yeah, I mean, we're seeing more efforts to try to stop them from moving. Absolutely. and also some effort to try to aid them, but this is short-term assistance. I mean, what we need to look at is a migration system within Europe, North Africa, the Middle East, and even other parts of Africa, which recognize that people are going to move, whether it's because of economic difference, because of conflict. And that, but that, again, is something that's very politically difficult to negotiate, and, and it's something that doesn't, again, win you very many points. Lord, let's extend on yeah. that. I mean, many are asking why the African countries, I mean, uh, you know, the African continent itself isn't taking in any uh, mm. refugees. Why aren't we? Well, I mean, North Africa has been absorbing a lot of people, uh, Eritreans, Ethiopians, Somalia, uh, people going into other countries within Africa, mm -hmm. some trying to get to Europe, but most staying on the continent. And of course, South Africa for many years has the highest number of asylum seekers of any country in the world mm -hmm. up until the Syria crisis. So many are coming here. Of course, Syrians are not making it down this far to South no. Africa and, and South Africa doesn't have the resources to fly them in to help them out. <laughs> but uh, Africa has been, at least for African refugees, has taken no enormous numbers. Even poor countries like Tanzania has has hosted half a million in the past. Mm, but don't you think that it would help, uh, certainly, I mean, ease the weight on Europe if we did take in some of those refugees, Lauren? Well, well I think that, that Africa as a whole should be saying to Europe, look, you can do more. You're wealthy. The numbers who are coming are not very great. And most of those who make it to Europe tend to be the highly skilled, educated, the people mm. who can pay the tens of thousands of dollars to cross. Uh, we get the, the ones who are more desperate and poor. And so I think it would be great to see something from the African Union saying, look, we have done our part. Uh, now it's time for you to step up and do yours. I like the way you put mm. that, Lauren. Now, before I let you go, what do you think is, is the lasting solution to all of this? What is currently being done also to try and deal with this? I mean, we just hear about meetings and summits, but nothing really comes out. Well, obviously, there, there's two sides to this. One is to try to end the reasons people have to leave. And, and that means ir solving the issues in Iraq, Iran, mm. Syria. Those are not easy things. No. As far as the people are concerned, it's trying to find ways of, of making them self-sustaining, able to get jobs, able to get housing, get their kids in school, get health care. Those require a lot of administrative systems, a lot of political will, and hopefully that we'll see that now. Mm, mm, and how long do you think that will take, Lauren? Well, generations probably, <laughs> generations. But uh, people, you know, people who move tend to be very entrepreneurial. They, they want to look after themselves. They want to look after their family. Mm -hmm. So the issue is about finding ways so that they can do that for themselves. Look, Lauren, a lot of people have been criticizing the European countries in terms of how they treat these asylum mm. seekers when they come to their countries. Do you really think there is a cause for concern in the way that they treat it? Or it's just some isolated things, that uh, cases that we see on uh, in the media? Yeah, I mean, I think what you're going to see is discrimination in many places. You're going to see you know, newcomers, there's, there's a fear of, of Islam across a lot we of... We had xenophobia uh, yeah. here, yes. We have xenophobia here. 
But if you look at Europe, you look at South Africa, you look at the United States, there's discrimination against immigrants, but mm. a generation, two generations ago, uh, a lot of the people who are just doing the discrimination were immigrants themselves. Mm. And so mm. you hope that these things go away over time, that Europe redefines itself, countries like South Africa redefine itself. But uh, in the short term, we're going to see conflict. Laurent, we call that Ubuntu yes. here in South Africa. <laughs> Thank you so much once again it's for being here and keep fighting in that fight. That was Mr. Laurent Lindau. He's the SA Chair on Migration and Political Differences, talking to us about the current migration uh, crisis.